Okay, let's talk about the Voting Rights Act of 1965. So first, I'd like to just go through a bit of the political history in the early civil rights movement leading up to the Voting Rights Act, because obviously a lot happened before then. So first, we'll start with the election of Truman. Truman was really the first uh, national and important politician to really make civil rights a uh, cornerstone of his campaign. And as a result, he got a lot of support throughout the country. Uh, you see there the, the orange states in the South. That's actually the Dixiecrat Party, which broke away from the Democratic Party uh, due to their due to uh, Truman being their nominee and and his strong support for civil rights, they were against civil rights, so they formed their own political party, which did very poorly. Got about two percent of the popular vote, I think, and Truman won the election by a lot. So one of his biggest civil rights accomplishments as president was desegregation of the military. This was really the first major institution in the country to, at least in the, in terms of government institution, to be completely desegregated. This was before schools or, uh, or uh, other federal agencies, so this was a big accomplishment. Then, of course, the next huge civil rights event would be the Brown versus Board of Ed ruling, complete desegregation, or at least a ruling that uh, segregation of schools was unconstitutional. Now, not all the schools would be desegregated for uh, several decades, but it was uh, a huge legislative or a huge uh, judicial victory. And as a result, it did cause a lot of tension, obviously. The uh, biggest escalation of that was with the Little Rock Nine, where the uh, armed forces, the National Guard, literally had to be sent to the school just to escort nine students into the building. Okay, so now we move into the Eisenhower administration and the Civil Rights Act of 1957, which really was uh, not much, especially compared to the uh, later acts, the uh, Civil Rights of 64 and the Voting Rights Act. But what was important about it was that it was the, f the first uh, civil rights legislation in over 80 years. So it really set uh, the image, at least, that the government was finally going to once again be involved in promoting uh, civil rights and equality. Uh, the next big political victory would be the 24th Amendment, which just outright banned uh, poll taxes, property taxes. Uh, you cannot charge any money or require any taxes or fees to be paid in order to vote. And so this was really uh, addressed one of the two major things that was preventing blacks from voting. So now the Civil Rights Act of 1964, that might be the biggest one, uh, uh, struck down all Jim Crow laws pretty much and banned public and private segregation. So you can see here, this is the 1964 election, uh, Lyndon Johnson's re-election. The Civil Rights Act had been his uh, major accomplishment. He really pushed very hard for that politically uh, in, his, in his early years as president after Kennedy was killed. And so he won by a huge victory after getting such uh, important legislation passed. Uh, almost the entire country except the southern states. If you look at the popular vote, it's even more massive. Uh, his opponent, Barry Goldwater, was an extreme conservative, wanted to uh, do nothing on civil rights. He wanted to uh, go after Social Security and, and all of that that had been uh, established uh, 
during the New Deal. So uh, uh, in, a, in a civil rights era, uh, a strong right winger did not do very well at all. So now we get to the star of the show, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And this, uh, as you can see from this picture here, uh, Martin Luther King was very involved in pushing this through Congress and getting what he wanted out of it. So the, the first uh, sentence of the bill is that this is a bill to enforce the constitutional right to vote. So really establishing that this should have been enforced going all the way back to the Constitution almost 200 years prior. And that this is just giving the government, the federal government, more power to actually carry out the enforcement of the right to vote. So the two main things that it uh, actually did were it banned literacy tests. This was the second main component after the poll taxes of what was being used in order to disenfranchise blacks. And the second thing was that all future changes to procedures in voting by the states had to be decided by the U.S. Attorney General at the federal level. So states lost their jurisdiction over the rules for voting registration. And this was very controversial uh, from a state's rights perspective. Many of the uh, conservatives argued it based on that, even though it's likely that they were also opposed to it on racial grounds. But uh, this definitely did give the federal government more power because the southern states were doing everything they could to block uh, blacks from registering. And so the agreement was that the federal government's jurisdiction over uh, a, a southern state that had been blocking uh, blacks from voting could be removed if there were there were no issues after five years. So if they complied with the law, they didn't try to uh, stop any uh, African Americans from voting. Then after five years, the federal government would no longer be monitoring that area. So this was how the law was structured. So now what's interesting is that uh, it was set up so that a lot of these provisions would have to be renewed constantly. So every 5 to 15 years, ever since 1960, Congress has had to renew it, often with much debate about should it be revised, should it be strengthened or, or weakened because it's no longer necessary. So here you see the most recent reapproval of it being signed by Bush in 2006. Uh, so this is, uh, I believe uh, it was in this case, uh, approved for another 25 years. So this shouldn't come up until 2031. But this, uh, the bill was not written to be permanent because they assumed that the, the issue of uh, racial disenfranchisement might die down over time. So now we get to the uh, immediate impact of the bill, which aside from uh, significantly increasing the amount of blacks who were able to register to vote in the South, which it did, the other thing it really did was shake up the in entire uh, two-party system. Uh, the Democrats shifted from a party that targeted the South, uh, and they now went after the more uh, progressive vote in the North. And the Republicans, starting with Nixon, adopted the Southern strategy, where they would target the whites in the South who were opposed to civil rights and uh, later uh, opposed to many other uh, progressive issues. Uh, really, this is a strategy that was, I would say, went on from the 60s all the way up until very recently, and they've now finally admitted that, uh, especially through the Reagan years, it was very racially motivated. And it was a, a direct result of the outrage to the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act in the South that they would target those white voters. So now to give you a sense of just how important the, the Voting Rights Act still is today, uh, a piece of it was actually revoked by the Supreme Court just last year in a case called Shelby County versus Holder. They ruled 
that the provision where the federal government could decide it could decide which uh, districts or states in the South needed to be monitored was unconstitutional because we're at a point where the South is not significantly more uh, racist than the North and also that this was uh, based off of outdated uh, data from 50 years ago. And to me, this really seems like a, a, a way beyond their means for the Supreme Court to be ruling on this. How could they say it's unconstitutional uh, when you know the, the constitutionality of it uh, what was basically affirmed by them having uh, never uh, made any statement or any inclination that they would want to rule on the constitutionality of the act. Uh, so they did strike down that that very important provision. Uh, the other provision uh, of poll taxes being banned uh, is still in place. So that's definitely the important part. But then again, the Voting Rights Act was ju uh, has been recently used to strike down voter ID laws, uh, restrictive laws in a lot of Republican states where you need a photo identification uh, in order to vote, and a lot of minorities uh, do not have access uh, as easily to that photo identification. Uh, this was um, an attempt really t to once again try to prevent them from voting. And it was actually the Voting Rights Act passed 50 years ago that was able to strike down some of those restrictive voter ID laws. However, now that uh, this piece has been repealed by the Supreme Court, it'll certainly make the act as a whole less powerful, I think. And so that is a dangerous consequence. Okay, so to conclude, I would say that uh, voting is one of the most fundamental uh, rights in, a, in any democracy. And th that's what really makes this law so important, is that the more people you have voting, uh, the more fair the elections are, the more of the country you are uh, actually representing. And uh, even if voting might not be uh, quite as powerful today with the amount of uh, influence that the rich and the uh, corporate America has on the political system. It's still something that we should absolutely fight to preserve. And that is the Voting Rights Act of 1965.